welcome back in this video tutorial we are going to see how to access the air quality data how to visualize it and export it and later on we'll be also seeing how to view it in JS platform so sentinel 5p offers a lot of uh, air quality air quality data so in this video we are going to focus on carbon monoxide in the previous video we have seen how to download the nitrogen dioxide NO2 so let us get started let us have a quick view about this so air quality monitor using sentinel 5p in google earth engine and particularly we are going to focus on carbon monoxide so sentinel 5p data sets is available from the year 2017 as it has been launched in that year and with a lifetime of seven years so this uh, satellite is equipped with the trompy instruments which focus on atmospheric measurement for air quality ozone and uv radiation and also climatic monitoring so if you want to know more about the sentinel 5p you can access the catalog by following this link and you can see the uh, carbon monoxide data measurement units is given in moles per square meters and we are going to use this band for getting the carbon monoxide air quality data co2 column number density and you can see some typical value ranges of co2 and what it means so 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 represents a clean or remote uh, clean air or a very remotely area and you can see where whereas in cities it can be ranging from 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 and in case of uh, a region with heavy traffic or fire occurrence can be having a value of 0 0.04 to 0 0.05 in the rare extreme events uh, it is said that 0 0.06 to 0 0.07 has also been there so let us now go back to google earth engine so this is the catalog sentinel 5p catalog that i'll be sharing you so if you just click on it carbon monoxide sentinel 5p so you can get to know more about this uh, co2 like uh, what and all the bands are there what are the pixels uh, pixel size you can see that co2 column number density this is having the carbon monoxide values spatially and you can also see some bands other than this also you can find right if you click on the description you can get to know more about the carbon monoxide and what are the major source of carbon monoxide and how the trompy captures this image of CO2 sorry CO you can also get the quotes for it okay now we just move on to the script to the script so the first step is we are going to define our study area okay right so we can define our study area by uh, using a shape file we can import the shape file that we have already uploaded to the google earth engine assets so if you don't know how to upload the shape files i have already made a video on it how to upload shape file raster files to the google earth engine assets you can also use this draw function draw a rectangular function and select your study area right so you can see here i have defined a variable called as geometry inside the geometry i'll be having my study area boundary right okay so now let us import a shape file from here from the asset section you can use this option to import into script you can see at the top it has been added and defaultly its name is being given as table so we are going to type in table so you can also draw rectangular for example if i want this as to my study area you can choose by drawing a rectangular like this in case if you don't have any shape file you can draw like this and get your area of interest you can simply update it for example you can see here the rectangular which we have drawn is as a default name called as geometry so instead of uh, shape file you can update it 
So shapefile has been having the default name as table. If you are drawing a rectangle like this, you can replace it with geometry. Like this, you can replace it. Just for an example. So now let us remove this. Okay. Now we are going to just work with our study area shape file. The next step is we are going to load our Sentinel 5P data sets. So at the top, you can just type in Sentinel 5P and hit enter. If you come down, you can find Sentinel 5P carbon monoxide offline. So click on it. And we are going to copy this image collection or you can directly click on import, right? Or let us close, close it once again. So once again, I am defining a variable called as variable. I uh, will be giving the name CO. This is because we are doing carbon monoxide. So I am just giving a name for it. Any name you can give is equal to here paste the image collections which we have copied. So we have paste the image collection followed by so we are going to filter it based on our boundary. So you can see here I am filtering based on our boundary. So boundary is nothing but the shape file right. So we have already defined we have given a name for the shape file as geometry. So I am using that shape file here to filter it based on boundary okay right and followed by that we are going to set the date range so for that use function dot filter date so here you can specify the date so sentinel 5p is still operational so in this case i am just going to use the uh, january months i am just giving some name for it so some date for it January 1st to January 21st of 2025 right after giving the date range from start to end let us move on to the next step we are going to select a band so I have already told you the band which we will be focusing on is CO2 column number because this has the CO data so for selecting the band I am using dot select function you can directly copy this one and paste it here right so followed by this is we are going to use the reduce function so when you are working with a larger image uh, you can see that uh, for you can see that uh, in our uh, data set some there might be some data gaps in between there will be no data in order to remove such problems we are going to use the function mean so you can see here I have defined a new variable called as co mean so that there will be no data gaps right so first co we have already defined the CO as you can see here at the top CO and here also we can change it accordingly right right so I am using the mean function to reduce the data gaps so data gaps are nothing but if you load an image there will be in between there will be a blank space where for some particular dates the image might be missing out due to cloud coverage or due to the satellite path so next is we are going to clip it so in order to clip this imagery co imagery we are going to use the function dot clip so inside that we are going to give we are going to what we are going to how we are going to clip it we are going to clip it using our study area boundary so i have mentioned geometry right now we just move on to the visualization parameter So this we can copy from the Sentinel codes. You can just copy it from here. 
and we can directly paste it so once again we are just uh, defining a new variable for the visualization so you can see I have given the minimum and maximum value the minimum is 0 and the maximum value is 0 0.05 you can see here this value might be very very rare or uncommon very extreme in some extreme events you can find such values otherwise you can will be not getting such values so minimum is 0 and maximum value is 0 0.5 and you can see the color scheme which I have given which we have copied from here right so we are going to the next step is we are going to add the match map which we have co map layer to the google earth engine for that we are going to use a function called as center map and add co layer so here what we are going to do is map dot center object is nothing but so based on our study area boundary geometry the map will be centered and we can set the uh, zoom level for it 6 is just a number you can increase the zoom level by giving it 7 8 9 or decrease it to 6 5 4 3 2 based on your visualization requirements so after that we are going to use the function called as map dot add layer we are going to add the loaded co2 to the google earth engine you can see here which uh, image will be loaded co2 mean as we can uh, we as we have mentioned already co mean that image will be loaded and it will be followed up by the visualization parameter which we have set so i am going to just update it band visualization right and after that we can give a name for the layer the layer will be uh, coming up over here for that we can give any name so here i have just given it co mean so the next step will be exporting this image to google drive right so for that we need to use this function export dot image to google drive and you can see the image which we are trying to export is the co mean right that we have already specified and you can see we have we can give any uh, description for it so i have given uh, some name for it co sentinel 5p export the scale is thousand so i have set the scale to thousand one kilometer scale that you can also find it here you can see the pixel size right and after that region so i'm just telling you should export it within the geometry that is our study area boundary so we need to specify our geometry name here that is study area name here after that the maximum pixel so it is in trillion so it there will be no problem in exporting the image finally the file format which i have chosen is geotiff so once you have given it you can run the script you can see the script is running on and you can see the result we have got the result co2 concentration over our study area you can use this inspector tool to inspect the values So you can just click on any of this area and you can check in the values 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, let us see it in the green region. So likewise you can also check in the values. Now in order to export this image, you can see in taskbar co2 sentinel 5p export so this is the task name which we have given as you can see here co2 sentinel 5p export you can just click on this run to export it to your google drive so if you have already created a folder in the in your google drive you can just give it given give the folder name here as you can see here for me g is there so i'm going to export it through the folder otherwise you can leave it empty it will be automatically creating a folder it is better you create a folder and just say the folder's name 
it will be exported accordingly you can customize the file name now after that click on run the process of exporting will be beginning so you can check in the progress in the taskbar itself you can see and you can find the layer under layer you can see co2 mean so that we have given here we have given the layer a name right let us wait for it to be exported and later on we will be seeing it, how to open it and view it in gis platform so now the image has been successfully exported you can open it in drive so you can see here it has been all uh, automatically added to the drive ge which i have created a folder now let us select it and download it so now the image has been successfully downloaded it's around uh, 2.8 mb let us view it in the gas platform so it will be there so the file has been downloaded but it's not updated here you can just refresh it and you can see co2 sentinel 5p exported before adding the image let us move on to the properties and let us edit the node data edit it compute the value and make it zero click on ok apply ok otherwise the background will be in black color that is why i have uh, done this step now let us drag it and drop the image now you can see we have got the results you can symbolize to give some uh, different uh, symbology for this so as we have already seen zero point you can see here in cities you can find if you find values greater than four it can be a heavy uh, polluted region uh, which is having high traffic so i'm going to choose this color scheme you can see here the dark green or blue color uh, represents the high value of co now let us click apply and click ok now you can see the difference so like this you can download the image also so if you find this video useful please do give us a like and subscribe to the channels for more videos on google earth engine thanks for watching goodbye